So what you're seeing here are all the parts that make up the Tantive 4 surface diorama. And not surface like the tablet, but service as in service corridor, which is where Leia gives her instructions to R2-D2 about Obi-Wan. So let me show you how to assemble this. So let's start with the corrugated tubing we found that is a match for what's on the uh, actual set. And you can just slide them on here like so. And it's been designed uh, in a way that the relief cut into this actually matches up with the hose so it stays put you get a whatever this is a shield door or whatever that is a match for the actual set so you get your corrugated tube you get the engraved bit here and you just slide them on from the bottom to the top like that and just get them centered man that looks cool Three more to go. So you will also find a plate in here which has screws that are pressed in. Then you have these tanks here and the short ones will have uh, a screw thread which means you can just screw on these tanks. Then this plate goes on top of the entire construction so that you have floating tanks just like the original set. Cool, huh? I like it. Look at that, even a stripper pole. <laughs> Never knew Princess Leia had those aspirations, but who am I to judge, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, that's done. Uh, this is the floor unit, by the way, the large one, and the, the small one also has the pressed in screws. That goes on top. I'm sorry, I got the things confused. So, the tanks, the floating tanks, and then that goes like this. Strip of pole goes here. Good. Good. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. No, something to that effect. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, for the next part, you might want to get an extra pair of hands because um, it's been designed so that you can um, assemble it and disassemble it again. Uh, which means you can use glue, but you don't have to. So, for instance, you see this plate here, and there's a cutout, I'm sorry, there's a cutout, uh, an indentation at the top of the plate, and then there's this small protruding section at the bottom, and that's where you put it in the slot. Now, at first, we had really tight tolerances on this too, but um, we decided against that, um, to make it easier to disassemble and um, because who knows what kind of temperature issues would uh, give us issues with the fit. So um, the it's just in the slots to make sure it, it stays uh, where, where we want it to uh, but it doesn't stand up. So you need someone who can hold all the plates and then the um, the, 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 the tubes, the piping, should I say, uh, that run through the length are uh, what finally gives it its, uh, its rigidity together with the ceiling, which is also slotted. Um, so you can assemble it and disassemble it uh, at any time. Okay, now first to identify the parts. Um, this is the bottom plate because it's the widest. And it's the right bottom plate because on the right side that's where you fit the tanks and the stripper pole. Um, and then 
it's easy to identify this right bit because uh, you need the engraving at the front and you need the scoops uh, on the top. Then how do you identify the right plate from the left plate? Uh, that's, e sure, that's easy too because the right plate has two holes in the bottom and the left plate has the rosette thingies here. Might be that we're going to add another hole and another pipe, uh, PVC pipe for extra stability here. So th this is, we're looking at the final prototype before we go into production, so there might be minor changes. But anyway, um, the two holes here uh, are what identify the right plate from the left. So you just place them in the slot, then you get a non-engraved plate that goes behind that in the slot, and the third non-engraved plate that also goes in the slot. Then you see you have the three, let's turn it around dad, the three plates just like the movie. And let's see the smartest way to assemble this. Let's already put in a bit of tubing to give it its first bit of stiffness. Like so. And then uh, in the final design we're going to make this a little bit tighter. Uh, and then the, the, top plate, the top plate with these slots uh, we'll make sure that everything is, is spaced correctly. So, moving on to the next one. Again, the one with the two holes here. Oh, hang on. Then, of course, a corrugated tube thing in front of that. Um, Another one of these plates. Like that. And slide the tubes through. Like that. Then get the final. Let's see which one is that. New. No. Yes. We get the final like that again with the two big holes. Mm -hmm. um, like that and that. Okay. Then get the stripper pole like that. And place the ceiling plates. And now let's place everything correctly so that it drops into the slots. So, in my humble opinion, that looks like a thing of beauty with the tanks and the different colors. I'm very glad we decided to go for painted. I made it a democratic decision which means that everyone who pre-ordered got a say and the vast majority said I want it painted and I'm glad we did because um, I'm going to take a gamble and uh, pre-order 100 of these sets uh, so I can offer it at the, uh, the same price as I quoted before which is going to be 200 and $89 uh, for the uh, for this version um, Everything including the stripper pole and everything and it does not include shipping of course because uh, shipping varies wildly all over the map so it wouldn't be fair to uh, put that on average then you uh, just have the uh, The center floor units the reason I'm using these three separate pieces is if you want to put this in a detail if you can because that's what it's sized to do but uh, then you need to have this to slide through the center of the detail and slide it to the right. I think I'll be making uh, some pictures of, uh, of that later, uh, maybe even some video. Um, and that way 
you can slide this one to the right, the left one to the left, and then just put this in between. But uh, let's start with the assembly of the other unit. Now, a thing to look out for, by the way, is on certain parts of the corrugated tubing, there is some very faint lettering. Make sure that's on the back side of whatever you're sliding it onto. So, let's get this. So, and then get one of the tubes in there to give it some, some stiffness already. This one too. Mm -hmm. Actually, it might be a good idea to add these things later. All right, my dad had to go. He apparently uh, had a life apart from this sort of thing. Nobody told me, but all right. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I assembled the left side on my own, and um, that was very doable. But um, let's set it up and get the other piece here. Like so. Add the stripper pole. Like that. And then place this behind. In, a in an IKEA Detolf, it's going to be placed a little bit farther back than I have it now, but you'll get the general idea. Like that. Looks pretty realistic to me. Let's zoom in on that, baby. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Wow. Quite realistic. Look how beautiful that corrugated tubing looks. Very movie accurate. Going over to the other side. The stripper pole. The floating tanks. All right, some more shots from the side. As you might have been able to see, we've left, left the, uh, the sides open so you get natural light and you can hide the odors in there to create the very red 1970s light that is in A New Hope uh, in this scene. Um, but I think it looks pretty awesome. That is the money shot right there. And all you need is one light from the side. From that side, because the sides are open, you get this beautiful light highlighting R2-D2, highlighting her face, getting exactly the movie shot. Looking at this from a bit more of an angle, from the other angle, all right, so we've done the assembly uh, separately outside of the detolf, which is what I suggest you do. Now let's, uh, let's show you how to put it inside the detolf. Uh, you get one side and just slide it in 
And as you can see, because of the massive differences between the different detolfs uh, over time, we've created a little bit of extra headroom and we've left the center where the figures will go open so uh, you have the maximum headroom there as well. Uh, so first I'll show you that it fits on the top shelf and then I'm going to move it down to uh, one shelf lower to show that it fits there too. So you slide it in uh, through the center and just slide it to the side and it'll fit between the wire frame and this has given me an idea because I have a little bit more room. So anyone who watches this within the first 24 hours of posting, you can do me a favor by measuring the distance you have between the glass plates on the outside. Because if I offer you a wider floor space in between, uh, even if I can gain half an inch, that's a little bit more room for your figures. So that might be one of the final tweaks I do between this last pr prototype and the production piece. Um, so I'm going to move down one shelf and show that it fits there too. All right, so before you place the diorama in the detolf, you have to place the uh, background graphic that comes with your kit. Um, it's, it's a Forex uh, based design. There's two places to put it. Either put it at the back of the wireframe, before the, uh, in front of the wireframe, or you can use double-sided tape uh, and place it on the back glass, which gives you another inch of depth. Um, and maybe increases the effect, but it might leave a gap between the floor and the graphic. So, let's get the left side sub-assembly, slide that in here, and as you can see, I again have clearance, move to the side, I have clearance, so that works perfectly. Now let's get the right side assembly, move it in through the center. You just get the floor plate, slide that in between, and that's perfect. See? Now, like I said, I have plenty of clearance on the right and on the left side, so I might be tempted to offer a slightly wider floor. As you can see, you can use this as a standalone piece or fit it inside your detolf and combine it with the other detolf dioramas I offer. So before I print, put Princess Leia in here and a Stormtrooper or two, and maybe C-3PO to get some, give you some idea of the different uh, options you have here, display options, a recap. This is all solid aluminum, except of course for the PVC parts like the tanks and the tubing and, uh, and this. Um, it's machined solid aluminum, then it's painted with an industrial painting process uh, where the paint, uh, painted parts even go into the oven. So uh, it's the toughest finish I could find, really. Um, and uh, we've used this very successfully on the back walls of the Death Star diorama. So let's call this pose the There's One Set for Stun pose. Works great with Stormtroopers. So this one would be R2-D2, Where Are You? And here is what it looks like with R2-D2 inside, coming towards C-3PO. So, hope you're as excited as I am. Thanks for watching, please share, like, subscribe, and if you want, the pre-order info is below the video. All right, so let's end on the ultimate money shot. What does it look like in a detolf with a, in this case, budget, Death Star Diorama and Darth Vader and one shelf up the Tantive Service Corridor. I'm quite pleased. Thanks for watching and see you next time.